and hope it works. Here we go. Okay, we're going back to screen share. Excellent. So also while you guys are here, feel free to type in the chat box what your goal is. It doesn't have to be diamond, but your rank goal um, in, in general. You're welcome to type that in. So of course, number one for me, you guys, no surprise, those of you that know me well, <laughs> number one tip is know your goal. You know, it is the thing I ask all the time. And in fact, I've gotten into the habit when I do mentoring with my girls, I usually do celebrations and one to fives. We always start like that, or at least I try to, you know, what have you got to celebrate? How are you going on a scale of one to five? And then lately I've just been going, cause usually I go straight to the tree. Cause I'm so like, rah, I'm so tree obsessed. Um, but I think now I've started to go like, what is your goal at the moment and how can I help? That's basically what we do on the call. It's like, what is your goal at the moment and how can I help? And that's what I, what I try to do. And the reason I do that, I think sometimes like, okay, those of you that are mothers, maybe you can relate. One of the things I found quite hard about parenting is when the dad would come home from work in his busy day and his busy mind, and he'd be like, why is the scooter on the lawn? You know, Hey, have you done your homework? You know, and it just that, and I don't want to be that mentor. I feel like uh, I, I always say to dads, you know what, here's the magic words you can say to a mom. What can I do to help? What can I do to help? So that's how I try to mentor is I try to come from that point of being like, what can I do to help? But of course, for you to know what I can do to help, you kind of need to know where you're heading, like where are you going and how can I help you get there, right? So that's the know your goal part. And I feel like we need to know our goal. And I don't just mean long-term goal, I want to be diamond. You got to break it down. So it's like this week, you know, what is your goal for this week? And how does that help you with, let's say, your long-term goal or your 90-day goal? Apologies, I think my font is like halfway off the page. You're just going to have to listen to my voice. Okay, so number one tip for sure at all times is know your goal. Know your long-term goal, like I want to be a diamond, but then particularly, okay, well, for this month, what is my goal? Or for this 90-day period, what is my goal? And what do I need to do to make that happen? You guys will often hear me talk about reverse engineering, and that's what I mean reverse engineering to make it happen. Okay, so the next slide, of course, is you don't just know your goal, you have to actually take action on the goal. So that's why I wrote down, oh, let me, I just gotta figure out where to put this photo of all of us to get us out of the way, there we go. Take action, you wanna take action, um, obviously. I, one of the other things I sometimes say is like, don't sit on your hands, you know, like don't sit on your hands. And however, I am gonna touch on strengths. I know that some people are more fluid and flow and other people are more go, 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 right? Obviously I'm a go, go person, but you do need to have both and you do need to have not necessarily balance, but you do need to have times of ebb and flow, times of hustle and flow. And so sometimes if you're going for a goal, particular goal or rank or whatever, then yeah, you're gonna need to take action. You're not gonna, like I said, you're not gonna get to diamond just by sitting on the plane for two years. Okay. So this is something that Paul Evans covered at his recent talk, and he talked about the formula to get to Diamond in two years. And I thought I would just share that with you guys now. For those of you that saw him live, Charlene, Allison, et cetera, correct me if I've got any of this wrong, but I think he said, here's the formula. You need to talk to two new leads every day, like two people, have two conversations, ring people, text people, check in, two new leads per day and two follow-ups per day, right? So um, just do that right? And then two classes or two one-on-ones every week. And if you do that for two years, then really that is the formula and you will be diamond. And that's not just sitting on the plane. That is taking action, right? That is being proactive and making things happen. So that's the formula for diamond in two years. It's called the two by two by two by one. Okay. Two new peeps, two follow-ups, two classes or one-on-ones per week. And the other ones are per day. So I guess I want to ask you guys at this point, like comment in the chat box, please. What is your by Christmas goal? I've got a by Halloween goal at the moment. I don't know. Maybe I'll just love holidays, but what is your by Christmas goal? And so let's think August, September, October. So September, October, November. Okay. Right. So that's more than a 90 day goal, but it's quite a nice little milestone. So what is your by Christmas goal? You guys can just type it in the chat box if you're willing to share. See Charlene's typing because I can see her big hand on the screen. Um, I'm gonna put you guys over here. Here we go. So another tip for sure is self-care. So obviously you guys know that I um, I'm not amazing at self-care at all. In fact, I'm working. It's something I'm working on. I just last week had my first facial in a year. <laughs> Literally, I I'm actually gonna start maybe booking a massage. Not maybe. Sorry. I am going to start booking a massage like a regular massage every month. 
once a month. And I think that's not too much and that's not too little. I think that's a good little goal. So I'd say the same thing for you. Hey, Nolene, awesome to see you on the Facebook Live. I'm doing Zoom and live at the same time. Um, yeah, so that is definitely something. If you guys are struggling or you're finding it hard or you feel like you're burning out, I've never burnt out, by the way. I don't do burnout. If I feel like I'm getting run down or tired, I go to self-care and then I go to like, what do I need to ditch? What do I need to delegate? Okay, because we can't afford to burn out. I don't think it should be even an option. Um, so self-care, reuse the oils, obviously, and then help other people, help your people with the oils. So you are number one. And so one of the things I say to my kids all the time, and it sounds really counterintuitive, like we need to look after everyone else. Yes, that's true. But as I say to them all the time, look after number one. You need to look at, you know, sort yourself out first. And then, you know, they're trying to hassle each other and help each other get ready. I'm like, sort yourself out first, get your own water bottle, get in the car. <laughs> so it's like, I really think get look after number one is very important, especially with the oils because you're role modeling to your people. So another thing I say a lot, and it's super true, especially with, with doTERRA is be who you are. So be who you are means basically don't try to be the people that you see on Instagram. Don't try to be the other leaders that you see at convention. Don't try to be me. Don't try to be Martha. Don't try to be whatever. And you're upline, just be yourself. And that is what people are going to be drawn to. And I am going to go into strengths as well. So here's a picture of me and Jesse, right? This is at a uh, convention just gone. And this is, again, is like, be who you are, right? Be inspired by other people. Sure. Watch their videos, uh, read their blogs. You know what? I'm not really much of a blog reader or a video watcher. I really don't stalk a lot of other doTERRA people. It's just not my style. It's not what I do, but I definitely get inspired by other people, um, doTERRA and non doTERRA. But I think it's important to be inspired. Just mute yourself. If you're tapping away or chatting away, please. Mute, mute. Um, yeah, it's super important to be inspired by other people and not compare yourself because if you fall into that comparinitis, it's gonna, it's gonna make you sick. Okay, just mute yourself, please. It's hard for me to manage people when I'm on this forum. Let me see if I can do it. I can hear Andy talking to Joe. <laughs> All right, one second. Sorry, it's not me, it. it's oh, somebody it's else. Okay, I'm gonna, I just have to, oh, it might be Lisa. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna mute everybody. There we go. That's cool. Just unmute yourselves if you, if you wanna say something. Here we go, going back in. Okay, cool. So as I was saying, be inspired by other people. Don't compare yourself. It's just a recipe for disaster if you're comparing yourself. Okay, so, oh, I missed somebody for muting. Oh, well. So um, we wanna, one of the things, I did a Facebook Live yesterday. I put it in the group. You guys can go watch it. It's actually on my personal page. It's actually posted on my GoTo Girl page. I shared it into the group. Thank you, Tracy, for your comment on that. I, I really am a huge believer in this, and I definitely have to catch myself too. I am not the queen of making empowered choices and using empowered language, but I'm getting way better at catching myself when I'm lapsing into autopilot of going like, well, I just need to do this, and I said I'd do that, and poor me, and bitter and resentful, and blah, blah, blah. So I really feel like we, <laughs> we benefit, and we are in our state of power when we catch ourselves like in the middle of a text or in the middle of a post or in the middle of a conversation or in the middle of our mind, you know, and tweaking your languaging so that it is positive. And I don't mean you have to like tell yourself fibs, like, you know, but just tweak it so that it is positive. It's an empowering. You can listen to it. My video, it's like 13 minutes long. Um, and it's not about doTERRA at all, but it really actually is about doTERRA. So you guys can, can watch that. And I really talk about ditching, really just ditching the, the word need and should from your vocab if possible. And also ditching the habit that I sometimes lapse into, and I'm sure you guys might too, of going into victim and blame mode, okay? It's easy to do with doTERRA. Oh, look at her. She got so much more help. Like, oh my God, that person built her to executive. It's not fair, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. And also mid-text, whatever you're writing, whatever you're saying to your team, make sure it's like empowered languaging and you're making empowered choices. You're doing things because you want to do them, not because you said you would. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And this does come back to self-care as well. It comes back to your goal. It comes back to your why. It comes back to being who you are. It comes back to doing what you want. And it comes back to saying what you want, which is my big thing. You guys know I love when people say what they want. Even like I had a robust conversation with one of my leaders the other week. And it was fair call because I hadn't really turned the tables and thought of things from her perspective. But I said, thank you so much. I'm so excited and appreciative that you actually are telling me what you want. Because if you just kept it in your head and you got all bitter and resentful, 
that wouldn't benefit you and it wouldn't benefit me. So I just love when people just say what they want, even if like, even if it's not what you want them to want, <laughs> it's good to know where they're actually trying to go. Okay. And I really believe I've got a little note that I'm, I'm trying to remember. I really, this is going to sound harsh. This is going to sound a little bit Jesse Reimers. You know, she's really straight up. This is me being straight up. This, I really feel like complaints are just a lame excuse for people not saying what they want. Think about it in your life. When you hear people complaining, whatever about whatever's going on, it's like, I really think they're just not saying what they want. Like, for example, if someone was like, Oh, I have to go and, you know, do the night shift again, or, Oh gosh, like my, my husband, you know, he's just like not helpful. It's like, say what you want. Oh, I wish I want my husband to actually be more helpful. What do you mean by that? What specifically? Oh, well, I really wish he'd take the kids to school once, once a week. Boom. Now we know what you want. Let's take it. Let's make a plan. Let's take action. Let's make that reality. So I love it. I love just, you know, honing into that, peeling back the onion on, because I feel like so it's so easy to whinge and moan. And really I don't have patience for that. I'm like, your complaints are just a lame excuse. Honestly, you can, I would love your comments on this for people not saying what they want. That's my thoughts. So in saying that, I think we really need to play to our strengths, you know, or we really want to play to our strengths. And this is something that I know that Martha encouraged all of her leaders to do, which I think is amazing. And, and we've spent a whole day actually diving deep into this um, in, in the Gold Coast. And I'm gonna encourage most of my builders to do it as well. And hopefully the rest of you will take, will follow suit. So play to your strengths and push your comfort zone. Sorry about the slide. It's a bit wider than my, my thing. So basically we want you guys to play to your strengths, you know, like, you know, acknowledge your strengths, embrace your strengths, but obviously in order to really get to diamond or wherever it is that you want to get silver, gold, whatever, pl um, platinum, blue diamond presidential, you really need to do play to your strengths, but also push yourself outside your comfort zone. So of course this is a photo of me on the right at um, whatever, leaning out on, on top of the sky tower. Not actually not that far out of my comfort zone, but that's just what the photo is supposed to represent is pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. I'll tell you what is outside my comfort zone. The other week, my husband was away and the, this guy came around to drop off some heating ventilation unit that we've got coming in anyway. And I had to back my husband's electric car out of a very narrow garage. And on one side is the wooden gate and on the other side is stones. And I was so frustrated and so impatient. And I tried three or four times and I was like, oh, I was like swear words and you can just imagine. And oh my God, I'm like, honestly, I would rather speak to a crowd of 2000 people then back this blinking car out of the driveway. Like that is so out of my comfort zone. Okay, that's obviously not gonna help me with doTERRA. But my point is, it, sometimes to get to Diamond, you do need to do things that you don't love doing, but you know that they're gonna get you there in the end. So I want you guys to think about that a little bit and I'll, I'll ask you a question in a minute. So this is me taking a photo of my name tag at the event. And of course, everyone had their name and then their top five written down on their lanyard. So it was like for everyone in the world to see. Now, Martha and I have paid the extra whatever, 30 bucks or whatever, to unlock our 34 strengths in order. And guess what my last one is? Guess what number 34? So everyone has all these 34 strengths in them, but some of them really bubble to the top, you know? And when you guys see mine, you're like, oh, that, that's pretty funny, right? Because it's, well, I don't know. It's very like action, you know, take action, know where you're going, blah, blah, blah. It's, I mean, it makes sense. It is very me. But guess what my number 34 was? You can type it in the chat box if you want. I'll, I'll tell you later on. Ask, remind me and I'll tell you what it, what it is. Okay, so that's me. And of course, right, there's no wonder that I you know, like love the idea of speaking in front of a large crowd, da, da, da. This actually was outside my comfort zone. I actually asked Martha and Joe, I had a really, really sore tummy uh, for the many days leading up to this because I was really a little bit anxious, excited for sure, but anxious about it. So sometimes when I say push yourself out of the comfort zone, it, it might be something that you actually want to do, you're actually excited about, but it does make you feel a little bit nervous, a little bit uneasy, a little bit open to what other people might think or what if you stuff it up or whatever. Um, but we just need to work through that. And that's where that mindset stuff comes in, right? And that's where you go, actually, this isn't even about me. I'm telling these stories and I'm just inspiring people. And, and I love telling stories and inspiring people. So sometimes the comfort zone and the strengths can actually blend. But I do want to encourage you guys. You know, I had a, a builder the other day talking to me. She was like, I think I'm just going to focus on doing what I, what I really love doing. And like, I'm not going to go and like do a community class with 30 people because that really freaks me out. And I don't have a loud voice. And I, and she's like, but I am going to like do lots of one-on-ones and I am going to do markets and I am, and I was like, awesome. Like totally. There's so many different ways you can grow your doTERRA team. You know, you can nurture people and help customers. I often say to people, sometimes it might be like just chatting with someone in the grocery store. Who was it the other day that said they enrolled someone? Oh, oh who was it? Darn it. 
they enrolled someone in some random place like that. And I was like, I love it. I love it. It doesn't have to be a structured class where you give people two weeks notice and, you know, they show up and they get their little brochure, you know, like it can just be a conversation like, you know, in the hallway at school or what at school drop off. So I feel like if you guys just do, do it the way you love to do it. And that's what I've done. I mean, I have done a lot of expos and some of you know, like I'm not a massive expo fan, meaning I would much rather speak to 200 people in an audience or 20 people sitting there than to stand there for three hours waiting for people to walk past me. Um, maybe I have an obsession with feeling important. I don't know. But I just, I just, expos are not my favorite thing, but I have done them. They do push me outside of my comfort zone. Sometimes we do things that we don't love doing. But I also think you, it's really important to know what aspects of growing your doTERRA business you really, really love doing. Like, what is your favorite part? You know, and do more of that. And what's worked for you? I know that Melissa Risley, you know, she's on Ingrid's team, on Charlene's team. And she said, she just, she's like, I don't really know many people. So I put a post up on Neighborly and I had someone message me and then they bought the home essentials. And she's like, she didn't even want to come to a class. I offered her a one-on-one -on -one in a class and she did, I would go, dude, don't put barriers in their way. If they want the kit, give them the kit, you know? So then she said, well, what should I do next? I said, do more of what works. She was like, okay, going back to neighborly. So it's like, you know, do, do what works for you. Um, so here, I want you guys, I'd love it if you could write down one example of how you are currently in your doTERRA business playing to your strengths. Mm -hmm. How are you using one of your strengths and it's actually really, it's working for you. You've, you've seen some traction there. You can type it or you can just write it in your notebook. Totally your choice. I can't see your comments right now on the view, but we'll, I'll go back and look at it after. And then also I want you to write down like something that is actually pushing you out of your comfort zone that you're doing that is helping you grow doTERRA, but you're, you're, you're acknowledging that this is actually not comfortable for me. You know, I'm going to feel the fear and do it anyway. And it's not that you're just doing it for the sake of doing it or someone challenged you. It's doing it with intention. It's making an empowered choice. Like that Facebook live that I recorded, that's what I'm talking about. You're acknowledging that I know this is going to benefit my business. It's not necessarily comfortable for me, but I, I can see that the end result is going to be really good. So like, what is something that you're currently doing that is actually pushing you out of your comfort zone? Well, just a little bit. Does anyone want to share, by the way? Can somebody just unmute themselves if you've got either a strength you want to share or a comfort zone example? Thanks, Charlene. Ella, you have to stop that. Sorry, I can only see four of you girls, so somebody else might have raised their hand. I don't know. Let me know. Charlene, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, play to your strengths. Well, I suppose the mindset work is really becoming one of my strengths in terms of I can, as you said, I can see my mindset changing a lot. And it's like um, watching it all the time. And when I go to say something like, I'll just do that, I think, change it to I am going to do that. Mm -hmm. So mindset starting with um, Martha's 30 day challenges, the convention, those sorts of things, having affirmations, um, listening to podcasts, going to the mind set, you know, the mind talk tomorrow with Robin Bank. So I think, you know, I'm really starting to play to my strengths and, and the cups always half full as opposed to half empty and push your comfort zone. Ringing people has always been something that I find is a stretch for me. So I'm, I'm really making myself ring someone every day. And it's getting a tiny bit easier, but I'm choosing people. I'm starting with people that are um, not too risky first. <laughs> yeah, stepping in, just stepping into shallow waters first. Just on that calling people thing, I think that's uh, it's something, again, that Paul Ovens mentioned at that event is about, but comes back to batching your time. And this is something I, I did early on in my doTERRA career. Well, when I was kind of doing go-to girl <sighs> stuff and doTERRA, I would kind of batch out. So I knew that on Fridays and on Tuesdays or whatever it was, those were my doTERRA days. Do you know what I mean? So I know that Paul says, especially with calls, batch your time. Like if you're going to call people, it's easier, right? Somebody told me this, Allison or Charlene, if you're going to ring people, it's a lot easier to sit down and do like five or six calls. You kind of get your groove on compared to like dragging it out throughout the one or two days and you do it here and there and you don't have any flow and, and you, you know, you've got interruptions in the background. It's like batch your time, do your calls, you know, get it done and you kind of get into a bit of a rhythm. So thank you for sharing that, Charlene. Okay, awesome. There we go. So back onto the slides. So comes back a lot of, a lot of doTERRA as you get to those higher ranks, like particularly silver, I'd say, silver and up. It's around mentoring your leaders, your builders, 
to their goals and their strengths as well. Right. So you want to like mentor them to what suits them. I know for me, what I like for myself is like a regular meeting at the same time each week. So that's what I've done with my girls, but they don't necessarily want that. Like I know that Kat recently said to me, actually, Nat, I would love to meet you in person. Like even if it's once every two weeks and then we just talk on the phone in between, but I really would love that in-person connection. And Anne was the same, you know, she lives kind of far away, but she's like, let's drive and meet in Takapuna. And we can go, she's like, we can go to Augustine as well. And, um, you know, and I'd love, she, so it's that in-person connection. So I want to remind you guys, check in with your leaders, just because you do things your way. I'm all about being efficient and being productive and jumping on Zoom at the same time each week, da, da, da. That might not serve everybody, you know? Whereas Renee, and I, I'm sure she'll be happy for me to use this as an example. She is more like, just don't, don't, um, what did she say? D don't, uh, don't pressure me. She said, don't pressure me. If I need you, I'll ring you, right? So you also will have builders like that who they go, yep, yep, I'll ring you if I need you or if I've got a question. And she does. She's, you know, she'll text me, hey, could you have 10 minutes to chat? Got to ask you something about a sponsor change. And I'll be like, yep, I can ring you now or in two hours. And she'll be like, now's good. Boom. And I jump on the phone. So we're very spontaneous. Whereas most of my other girls, it's kind of booked in. Um, so yeah, make sure you check in with your leaders. So for my girls that are on my call, on this call, please make sure you let me know if anything ever changes and how you want to do things. Um, cause I want to make sure we want to make sure that we're, you're mentoring your people according to their goals and their strengths, not the goals that you have for them necessarily. Hopefully there's great alignment there, of course. And it can, as Charlene knows, and a few of the other girls, when you're going for a rank, like Joe, when she hit, you know, um, platinum, when you're going for a rank, it can be super fun, right? When your leaders are all on board and you're going for ranks together, you're ranking up together. Like, you know that these two girls are going to hit premiere and you've already got one at premiere. So you're like on the verge of gold. So you're ranking up together, right? The minute those girls both hit premiere, you're going to be a gold. It's exciting. It can be fun. You have to communicate with them. You got to get them on board, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So another tip, celebrate your wins, right? Celebrate your and your team's wins. And this is, a, doTERRA is very good at celebrating. This is the, some of the girls that did Diamond Club last year. This is me and Claire and Joe with some of our doTERRA cousins. So you'll recognize Melissa Cameron. She's on Martha's team, but not my team. You'll recognize Molly and Jody. Same thing, Martha's team, but not my team. And so it's awesome to, you know, get excited with some girls on other teams um, and also to celebrate, you know, all your hard work and your wins. And I think that's really important. And I'm a huge fan. You guys know I love gift giving is my love language. So I love to give out like bracelets and necklaces and things. Um, Charlene, we need to talk about your gold prize if you're going for a jacket or shoes. <laughs> so just think of, you, don't, you guys don't have to do that either. This is just the way I like to celebrate. And I also like to do experiential celebrations. So I'm going to, that's something I'm like booking in the uh, very near future with my PA is like looking at how I can celebrate some of my leaders, like with a more of an experience, like time together and that type of thing. Um, and I know Martha loves that too. Like we went out, I think when she hit, was it diamond or blue diamond or whatever, a bunch of us went out for dinner and just doing cool stuff like that is really part of it. So celebrating your wins for sure. And your team's wins. If you guys just hit a rank or you, or you like hustle for a rank and then the next week, your next month, you're trying to get back to that same rank. Cause I definitely don't recommend going backwards. I've never actually gone backwards. In interestingly enough, I was a silver for a long, long, long time. I was a gold for a long, 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 long time right? But I actually have never gone back a rank. So I would not advise it energetically. Um, but I think if you're, if you're trying to solidify a rank again and you get there, please block out your calendar. Always. I always block out hustle day. You guys have probably seen me. You can call it flow day if you want, but on the first of the month, which is obviously the last day of the, the previous month because of the um, American calendar, I block it out. So I don't have any other appointments. I don't have calls. I don't have other events going on. It's literally called hustle day in my calendar. Because if it's not me going for a rank, it's probably one of my leaders. They probably need to call me and talk through things and maybe like look at the volume and, and do some calculations and hustle for a few more customers. So as you get higher in the ranks, even if it's not you going for a new rank, you need to think of your team. Block out your hustle day. Make sure your family is on board. They know it's hustle day. Oh, mommy, is it hustle day? Yes, it is. Don't bother me, right? <laughs> so you need to get them on board as well. And it can be really actually quite fun. So like I said before, whether you're going for a rank or solidifying, please block out hustle day. And then please block out some sort of celebration, whatever your love language is. Buy yourself something. You go, I do love to buy myself things now and then. I'm going to buy myself a hot tub soon. Um, so buy yourself something or like book a massage or go to the movies or like whatever. Just take the day off. Okay, I've never actually taken the day off, but you know what I mean? Book half a day, right? Whatever is your style. So just make sure you don't just go, oh, here we go again, right? That's not the energy we want to go into a month with. Take time, 
celebrate, and then know your goal and go for it. Okay. So again, like I said, you got to get your peeps on board. Um, this is like obviously an old photo because Jonah has lots of hair, but this is, I love this photo because it's like, you know, we're all into it. And you're, I know that um, Claire's boy, Dominic, he's always like, mommy, mommy, you know, what rank are we? Are we this rank? You know, and your kids start speaking the doTERRA language. It's really funny. Um, and some of you with older kids, you're going to have your kids on your team. I mean, how exciting is that? I know Trace has got Alicia. Actually, she's, uh, hey, Alicia, she was watching the Facebook Live before. So it's pretty awesome. I know Joe's got Ella. You know, you're going to have some of your kids on your team, which is awesome. And the, for those of us with the younger kids, um, just getting them on board with the whole concept. And you guys know it has not been an easy journey for me in terms of hubby being on board with doTERRA. I mean, he literally just three months ago, he started taking lifelong vitality and he carries a bag that has the word doTERRA on it. So that is groundbreaking. So for some of you, you might have like a real cheerleader um, and that's awesome, but some of you might not. You might have someone going, what are you doing? What are you, this is crazy. What are you thinking? It's embarrassing, whatever. So, you know, we can talk about that. It's a whole nother um, topic, but I think just as long as you can get your peeps on board um, with your goal and your why, it's going to be so much easier. Any comments on that hot topic? <laughs> All right. So this one says, know your tree intimately. So I mean, I remember the other day I had someone over and she was like, oh, can I order something? What's my number? And I'm like, I don't know your number, but literally I log in and I have like what, 2,500 people now. And I could find her in like two minutes. Like I just know where, I just know where, I just know where she is. I know who she's under. I know generally which leg, boom, 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 boom. There she is. You know, like, I'm not saying I'm not showing off. I'm just saying you guys should know your tree intimately. Like I am literally like a crazy lady. And I know Martha's the same. Like we literally log into our back office probably about 10 times a day. <laughs> so you don't have to do that. But it's like, as you get higher in the ranks, you really need to know where your people are and what's going on with your people, especially if they're going for a specific um, rank at that time. It's really easy to lose focus for on your strong leg. And everybody will relate to that. As you get higher in the ranks, you will have a leg that is stronger. Please make sure, and I'm speaking to myself as well, that you continue to give them the love. Just because they're your strong leg, you, just, you need to still give them the love, give them the mentoring time, um, and keep, you know, keep motivating them. You know, it might not be volume that you're giving them, but you can, you can help them in so many other ways. So there we go. So know your tree intimately. Obviously, connecting and consulting with your upline or your enroller is super important. As you guys know, Martha and I, um, you know, we've been friends, whatever, business colleagues, friends for about three years now. And it is important, you know, to connect with your, with your upline and, and to really know where they're at and consult with them. I think I still, not every single move, but even as a diamond, occasionally I will be like, hey, I just don't, I'm not sure about where to place this person. What do you think? You know, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? Right? So I really cannot hone enough to you guys. And some of you are better than this, at this than others. Please check in with your upline before moving your peeps. Even if you think it's not a big deal. Oh, yeah, they're just a customer. It's fine. No, 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 no. Check with your upline. Read my lips. Consult your upline, please. Because like I said before, it can bite you in the bum later. It can delay your rank advance by three or six months. No joke. Okay, so you need to always consult your upline because they know how to help you strategize your tree, especially Martha and I, because strategy is number one for both of us, ironically. But, you know, they know how your upline, your silver upline really is who you need to consult with. So if your upline is not a silver, that's fine. You just need to talk to that person and you need to say, hey, this, you've got this, you know, I've got this lady, Kelly, I'm thinking of moving her here. What do you think? And this is how the conversations with my builders go. I like, I will log into their account. I'll be like, right, you've got three people to move. Okay, this woman, uh, Lisa, tell me about Lisa. That's what I say. I go, tell me about Lisa. And she goes, well, you know, like, let's say it was with Melissa, right? In the early days, I'd be like, tell me about Lisa. And she'd be like, well, you know, she's a school mom. And I think I might put her with the school moms. And I'm like, okay, well, do you want to put her with the healers over here? No, 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 we'll put her with the school moms, you know? And I'm like, okay, awesome. But as you get closer to a rank, you, it's, it's geography, it's friendships, but it's also strategy, right? It's also where do you actually need the volume? And it kind of chops and changes a little bit more. Now, I'm, I'm a solid diamond now. I've been diamond for four months. I'm back to that point of going, oh, you know, friendships and geography are actually trumping strategy sometimes, you know, because I'm like, actually this person, I could put them here, but, you know, but ge geography and friendships, I really actually think they would be better placed on this team. So I'm just putting people where I think they fit best, which is really fun. Um, so that's what I'm saying, you guys, you need to talk to your upline about where you think they're going to go. And then they can check with their silver upline. Hey, this is what we're thinking. What do you think? Yep. Sweet. Or no. Have you considered this? Cause sometimes with fresh eyes, they can see some things that you're just not seeing. Okay. You guys know 
how important that is. You get how enthusiastic I am on that topic. Okay, so some of you will know what this is because you've been there. So I think a massive part of people's success, and I have to say, for Renee, for Charlene, for Melissa, going to the doTERRA event, particularly gala, particularly seeing all these people walking down the red carpet with confetti, and maybe it was about the red carpet and confetti, maybe it was about if that many people are diamonds, surely I can be a diamond. Like maybe it was like, you could actually see yourself and Charlene could see herself <clears throat> with her four daughters walking down the red carpet. And so really getting your people to doTERRA events is massive, right? It is an investment of time, of logistics, of childcare, of money. I get it. I've been there. I hear you, but it is so worthwhile. Does anyone who's on this call right now want to share a thought on that? Go Melissa. Hi, everybody. I hope it's me you were talking about. It, <laughs> yes, it's you. <laughs> um, I definitely um, agree that going to a doTERRA event is completely game-changing. I went um, heavily pregnant to um, the convention in Sydney. I can't even remember where it was, when it was. February, March. Um, and it just gave me the momentum uh, and I completely understood why I was doing doTERRA, the culture. It's something that you just can't explain that you just have to attend. You get to solidify those friendships. You get to meet your doTERRA cousins and sisters and all that kind of stuff. It is just absolutely incredible. And I know I've been really gutted that I've missed a couple. Um, from having baby uh, Sienna, but it was really cool to go again when Paul was here and it's given me my momentum back. So I definitely um, agree with you, Natalie, you have to go to an event. Yes, indeed. No, so we've got international events and we've got local events, right? So we've got things happening in most of the main cities. Some of you guys will have to travel. If there's not an event coming to you, right? Like Amy and Trudy down in Invercargo, we definitely want to bring something down to you. But if there's something happening in Christchurch, you can always ask, you know, your upline, hey, will you meet me halfway? Meaning, will you sponsor half of my ticket, whatever, to get me to the event? You know, you can always ask, right? If there's something going on, if you weren't able to go to anything international. But I really want to stress, try to get to something international. Try to get to Aussie. So we've got convention in May, I think it's the 14th to the 16th or thereabouts. And then we've got, um, and that's later than usual, it's, it's usually March. And then we've got leadership, which is more about the business side of things. I think that's in July. So I put a slide up with all the dates I can show you guys. But, and there's also some incentive trips, of course, there's the Vietnam incentive trip. So right now, if you're enrolling people, you will be ranking for getting some of your trip paid for. Um, so. Yeah, there's exciting things happening. Also locally, like I said, once a year, Martha runs this amazing retreat. Um, so this year, I'm going to have like tons of my team there. I'm so excited. So you want to make sure that you, as soon as we release the dates, like later this week, you want to put that in your calendar, make, do like move, whatever, heaven and high water, whatever, to get there and to get your team there because it's massive. Definitely really huge. Okay, here we go. Be resilient and have courage. Getting to diamond equals not easy. That is true. <laughs> but as you guys know, I mean, those of you that are silver, those of you that are premier, like it's actually nothing, none of it is easy. I would never use the word easy. It is inspiring. It is empowering. It is challenging. It is, you know, all those things, motivating and, and fulfilling. Um, and like you guys have heard me talk about this before, there's kind of those three stages of building that I see people go through. Number one, they're in the, oh, I just want to share the oily love. I love the oils. And they're just like, yeah. And then number two, they're like, yay, I'm getting my oils for free because I'm enrolling a bunch of people. Number three, they're like, okay, show me the money. Right? Like kind of number three, they're kind of like, okay, you know what? Like, yes, this is fun. I love sharing the oily love, but I actually want to see some dollars and I actually want to like have more impact. Right. And the four reasons why people do doTERRA as a business. Remember, can you guys please comment right now? What is your number one reason at the moment for why you're doing doTERRA? Is it community? Is it flexibility or freedom? So that's the flexibility to work when you want, how you want, where you want. Is it finances, right? The, the exponential potential for income or is it impact? Comment, please. I'd love to know. I'm going to come back and read them later. Very interesting. So um, yeah, and like I said, it's, you need to be resilient. There will be times when you go like WTF, what am I doing? What was I thinking? This is crazy. You will have that mindset stuff 
Or better than that, you'll have someone like your dad and your husband at the same time saying that kind of stuff to you. Hashtag not helpful. Um, so you, there will be times when you have to be resilient and you have to be courageous. And for me, it would, did not make sense at all for me to do doTERRA. I did not need community. I did not need, uh, I did not need flexibility. I already had that. I did want to have more impact and I definitely wanted exponential income. I had income, but I wanted exponential income. And those are the reasons as well as obviously wanting to help and my obsession with helping people. Those are the reasons I took that path and I didn't really know what I was doing. And I just kind of trusted, even though I'm not amazing at trusting in general, I just kind of went with the flow, even though I'm not very good at going with the flow. Um, I'm very good at working hard. I'm very good at being strategic and mentoring and motivating people. And so I, do, I pulled on my strengths, right? Um, but I also had to pull on some things that were not my strengths as well. Cool. And by the way, that's a picture of me in Wanaka. Gotta love Wanaka couple years ago. <laughs> okay, so here we go. You guys have heard this before, but it cannot not be said. You need to reconnect with your why, right? You need to revisit it because it will change as your time and your journey and your roller coaster of doTERRA goes on. Um, you need to revisit and reconnect with why you're doing it in the first place. And that's super important. So for some of you, if you feel like you're stuck at a certain rank or you're really having trouble going forward, it might be a matter of like, what is like, you know, sharing the oily love is not going to get you to silver. I'll tell you that for free. Okay. So you need to, go, you need to dig deeper. <laughs> you can tell I'm a money, money motivated person because I always say stuff like that. I'll tell you that for free. My boy the other day goes, aren't you going to say, I'll tell you that for free. I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. I really want to tell you guys when I hear, this is where I'm going to get a little Jesse Rammers on you. When I hear people say, oh, like I've, I've run out of leads or I don't really know many people, I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I cannot drive down the street without seeing like five or six opportunities. And I'm just, and I'm not being cheeky. Beauty salons, hair salons, gyms. I just went to my local swim school the other day. Teachers everywhere, like sad people crying while they're walking down the street. Uh, you know, there's just, there's opportunities are everywhere, okay? I really think you need to just make things happen. You need to up your brave. You need to put yourself out there. You need to think a little bigger. And when I say think bigger, it's like there's a health food shop that I went into and I've been into it tons of times. And I was like, I'm just going to ask them. And then I went to another health food shop. So hot tip health food shop. And she had oils already, that dolphin brand. And she had diffusers, had salt lamps and all sorts. And I was like, Hey, <laughs> do you want to try it or dare? You know, and have samples on you. Obviously there's things you can do to be organized and ready. Have your business cards, have samples, follow up with people, et cetera. But I really think opportunities are everywhere. Why did I choose this photo? Because guess what? Ruby's school didn't come to me and say, hey, do you want to come and do a talk about resilience? No. I got in touch with them and said, hey, I know you're studying natural disasters. We, I just came back from Sydney where I presented a talk about resilience to, to 3,000 whatever people. Uh, would you like me to come and just talk to Ruby's class about our experience with the Christchurch earthquake? And they said, well, we would love it if you could come and talk to the whole cohort, which is all the year sevens. And of course, my daughter's like, no. She's like, what are you wearing? Don't point me out. Don't say my name, right? <laughs> really embarrassed. But anyway, that's what this picture is about for you guys. No, you do not have to go and speak to a, a cohort of year sevens at all. Actually, I was quite out of my comfort zone. It was like the trickiest audience I've worked with. They were awesome. But my point is, you don't need to do that. You don't need to be me. But my point is opportunities are everywhere and don't give me the lame excuse that you're out of leads because honestly, there's everywhere. You just need to open your eyes. You just need to change, tweak your languaging and your mindset and put yourself out there, get a little bit out of your comfort zone, maybe, and you would be surprised what happens. Okay. And sometimes if you live in a small town and you tell me that, you know what I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say, get out of town, get out of town. I could build, I could build the diamond without leaving Auckland ever. Just saying. Okay. I, don't, I really don't feel like I need to travel here, there, and everywhere because there's so many people here that need the oils in their life and can benefit. For you guys in smaller towns, like, yeah, if you're having trouble, I'm just like, get out of town. That's all you have to say. Get out of town, get in the car, go somewhere, get on a plane, make things happen. Okay. It might sound harsh. This is, I don't know if you thought I was a big softy softy. I am kind of a little bit like that. And uh, yeah, that's just what I think. And if anyone wants to comment on that in their own experience of getting out of town, um, obviously, I've done Diamond Club twice. You guys are going to hear a lot of us talking about Diamond Club soon. Um, Martha's coming up with a, 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 a new um, something else, another opportunity for some of you guys starting in early September that'll help you if you think you want to do Diamond Club. But I think opportunities are everywhere, right? To learn more in doTERRA, to enroll more people, to share with other customers. You just need to actually look for them. You're like, okay, we get it. Let's move on. <laughs> what impact do you want to have? Write it down. 
right? Write it down, write it. On, I love writing stuff on my mirror in my bathroom. That's like my go-to place, but you can write it down. Make sure it's in your face. Yeah. Or on your phone or record something to yourself. Um, but just get really clear on the impact that you want to have because that's going to see you past the rank of silver and beyond. Joe, you're welcome to chime in with any words of wisdom at any stage. Talking about comfort zone, Martha and I love telling the story about when Joe was going to silver and she honestly felt like she was going to vomit because she was feeling so sick about it. And Charlene going for silver as well. Like she was like the adrenaline and the pressure, like she kind of loved it, but hated it. Right? Like it's, it's stressful and exciting. Um, so here we go. What, my question to you guys, what is your version of success with doTERRA? It doesn't have to be diamond. What is your version of success to you? Like, what does that look like? For some of you, you might be like, you know what? It's not even about diamond. It's actually about getting my husband, you know, out of that job that he hates. Right. Or it's not even about that. It's about, you know, allowing, I know, for example, Lindsay, right. Lindsay in Christchurch, you know, one of her wives being able to travel back to the UK when she wants to, because she's from there, right. Not having to like save up and save up. That's great. Success, success with doTERRA. The other day, who was it? Um, Bex, Bex on Caroline's team posted a brilliant photo of a car. And she said, I don't really talk about doTERRA much on my personal page, but I just wanted to share with you guys, I've just been able to purchase this car. What is it? Um, freehold, right? She purchased a car because she'd been squirreling away some of her doTERRA money every month for the past four months. So for some of you guys, success might be owning that BMW or whatever for me, getting that hot tub. Um, you know, it might be that, or it might just be being able to be calm and be present. You know, some, whoever masters that one, please let, let me know how. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right, we're almost done. So I want you guys, I'm going to ask you guys the question. If you've seen the new empowerment kit, it's got the new nature solutions class, which by the way is awesome. Allison enrolled in nature solutions kit the other day by doing that class. Joe and I did one last week by doing that class. So in the new empowerment kit, it doesn't say what are your three main health concerns. Hi, Sarah. It hi. says, hi. It says, I want to feel less dot, dot, dot. You know, I want to feel more dot, dot, dot. And I want to ask you, I'm going to throw that back at you guys, right? So as a leader in doTERRA, right? Or as someone that has chosen to pursue this as some sort of path in your life, how do you want to feel? And you don't have to answer me, but just write it down. Please share it with your upline the next time you have a mentoring call. If you don't have a mentoring call, please arrange one with them. I want to feel less, whatever. And I want to feel more, whatever, because I really feel like if we hone into how we want to feel, then we can, that's part of our goal. And then we can make a plan to make it happen. So there you go. These also will help obviously using the oils, Melissa, and doing these things, having boundaries, you know, being reliable, having accountability. Yeah, I'm not sure what the vault is about actually. Putting your money in a vault, no. um, having integrity, having non-judgment on yourself and others. And then of course, tons of generosity. Um, so there you go. What, this is my final slide. So is diamond in your future? You can comment on that one. Is diamond in your future? It may or may not be. It doesn't have to be. But hopefully if you, if you think it, you'd love to, you know, be a diamond, hopefully you found this helpful, you guys. Um, some of these tools and some of these tips that I've mentioned today. So I'm going to come back to you now. I love that I've got these girls on Facebook Live as well. Very cool. Hi, Claire. Awesome to see you. Um, yeah. So is diamond in the future for you? I'd love to know. Sure. I'm going to go, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to go back and scroll through and just have a look, but I would love any comments from any of you guys on your journey, um, anything that resonated for you or anything you would love to add that I probably didn't mention. I'm going to actually unmute all of you. I'm going to get you each to say just one action because I'm an action girl. <laughs> one thing that you're going to take away from <laughs> my presentation, like whatever, even if it just reminded you of something you already knew. Um, Amy, I'm going to start with you. Hi. Amy, uh, Amber Cargill. Woo -hoo. <laughs> uh, one action is to um, follow up with more of my people that I wrote down last week. Um, I got a really good start on it and then I kind of went into a slump. So I need to get back out of that. And you're in a full-time job, right? Yeah. So do you like batch your, how do you do your doTERRA time? Like, do you kind of decide, you know, there's three nights a week you're doing it, but not every night or how do you do it? Yeah. So I try and do, um, at the moment I've got um, less sport on. So at the top is handy. So I'm um, trying to do say Monday, Tuesdays and Friday if I can. <laughs> 
um, yeah, it does make it hard when you've um, got a lot of other things on after work, and a lot of other commitments when I've got work functions, but, um, but totally doable. Funny, yeah. But totally possible. It is possible. I'm doing it. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. I think batching your time is really good, especially if you have other stuff. Batching your time, writing doTERRA in your calendar to make sure you actually do it. And even better than that, writing down like follow up calls and make it a repeating event every week. So every Tuesday night or whatever, you know, that's when you do your calls. And then you do, you know, like certain tasks. Don't just write yeah. doTERRA, but write down what you're actually doing and make it a repeating yeah. date with yourself. Definitely okay. need the structure. Definitely. Um, and I need to sort that out a bit more. <laughs> you mean you're going to, right? I so we're not going to say need. We're saying I'm going to. It's very empowering. Okay, Tracy. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amy. Tracy. Um, what is it? I'm, I know what my goals are. I've just got to work out what, how am I going to get there every week? And as well. And as well. Oh, you're oh. right. Did you no, hear I'm just, sorry. I forgot that my Facebook Live people can't hear when I'm plugged in, so I want them to hear you with that. <laughs> oh, great. Um, yeah, so I know what my goals are. It's just working out every week um, the time that I need to work on to take action. I, mm -hmm. um, I have my strengths. I can talk to people. I'm not worried about that, and I know a lot of people. It's just giving me a big kick and a boost. I prefer to sort of be mentored, and have some sort of accountability. So, yeah. And yeah, I spend, yeah. Yeah. And also, I think also, so pull, drawing on like responsive, taking responsibility as well, mm -hmm. maybe for you, like, like the batching of the time, because you've got the full-time job as well. So it's like batching your time. And the other mm -hmm. thing I want to ask you guys is whenever people say like, I'm like, what is your goal? That's why I said by Christmas, because with goals, I want to know by when, you know, what is your specific goal by when, and how are you going to make that happen? So it's, it's one thing having a goal. I was actually on a call with a, one of somebody today as well. And she said, she does want to be silver, but I'm like, yeah, but by when and how, like, what's your plan? So I feel like sometimes we need to dig, we need to dig a, a bit deeper. That's awesome. Okay. So who's next? Charlene. Mute. Thank Sorry, you. just doing two things at once, just mentoring Sandra and saying, what? Because she won the draw for the mindset. She said she can't make it. So I'm saying, you have to make it. Make it happen. That's yeah. fun. So did Joe. Joe, did you see that? Congratulations. Um, so I'm doing my, um, my immediate goal is to get to gold again by the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Which What's is looking action? like a mammoth task at the moment. But, okay, so um, what are you taking away from today to make that goal happen? Um, well, I think, um, you know, because I've been coaching with you for a while, I think um, all of those things really, you know, there's, there's not one that's sticking out as the major one. If anything, it's affirmation that I've been doing lots of those things. So um, mm. just keep doing what I'm doing, I think, mm. is what I've got to keep doing. And I'm just going to touch doing on what, I'm doing. what you said before, just before you said, and it's a mammoth task. And I love what Martha often did to me when she'd be like, are you platinum this month? And I'd be like, oh, I'm really, really, I'm like miles away. She goes, don't say miles away. So it's, this is again, catch yourself, right? She's like, you know, it's totally doable or just like I caught Amy out before. So we need to just get I mean, it's great to get in the habit. Sorry, not we need. It's great to get in the habit of catching our own selves, but also in a fun kind of way, calling our, our, each other out on it. And I know you do it really well to your team as well. So instead of saying it's a mammoth task, let's get all Tony Robbins on it. And instead you can say like, you, you know, you just tweak it, right? As we say, flip it, like flip it into something like, you know, it's a, uh, it's an exciting journey, right? Doesn't that sound yeah. better? Yeah, it is an exciting fast. journey. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I'm gold. So cool. <laughs> yes, you are. I'll get there. <laughs> yes, you are. Awesome. Okay, Melissa. Um, okay, my action step. I think I've been sitting on my hands a bit. Um, I know. I'm cuddling my baby way too much. Um, so I think I need to up my brave. I'm I'm not very good at calling people I think I'm that generation that I like to text so I really don't um do a lot of that so I'm gonna up my brave and I'm actually gonna get on the phone and uh, block out time to talk to people and if you batch it I'm sure it won't be so bad I'm great at like Facebooking going, yeah, let's chat but I think sometimes it's actually having that voice conversation is really important and I hide behind that. Mm, good acknowledgement. Very cool. 
All right, Sarah, thank you for joining us. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I was um, working till 8.30 and then- You don't need excuses, you just yeah. <laughs> But anyways, I'll watch the replay and then I'll go over everything that I've learned that I can share with you. But so my immediate goal is um, solidifying silver. I work seven days till 8.30, so my time is quite limited. And the half a day that I have off is Wednesdays. Wednesdays is my doTERRA day. Um, but in between that, um, you know. Did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear? And I'm not saying that she's giving out excuses. What I'm saying is she works like a ton of stuff. She works a lot and she only has Wednesday afternoon and she's a silver, right? So that's pretty cool. Like be inspired by others. That's what I'm talking about. So that's cool. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, Wednesday's my doTERRA day, day, but I do do, um, 6am starts with my UK team. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they know that they between 6 and 7 a.m. They can call me anytime. And then 7 a.m., obviously, three kids, school runs, after school sport, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, it's it, life is really crazy. And what I've got to learn to manage is not going too full on and then crashing because sometimes that's been a habit for me. Okay, so at this, if, when you watch the replay, I did talk about burnout and I said burnout, mm. I've never burnt out. Burnout is not an option. It's mm. like you can catch yourself before that. You need to eat and then ditch or delegate. Um, yeah, so I mean, whatever. I didn't give massive tips on not burning it, but I did say self-care is number one. Yeah, so that's definitely something I probably need to, well, definitely something I need to put more forward. But I'm really enjoying where I'm at right now, the pace that I'm going at. And I definitely want to be diamond. Obviously my immediate goal by Christmas is to be gold. Um, but I really need to just, yeah, catch up with my team, really make sure that everyone's happy along the way. Cause again, one of my learnings has been enroll, 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 and then um, not support enough and talk about LRP enough and a few mistakes getting made along the way with people ordering their own LRPs and um, sorry things keep appearing on my screen um, but I'm, I've learned so much in the last month both about myself and about where I'm going and the destinations there I just need to balance and manage my time more effectively Awesome. Okay. I love that you mentioned personal development too, because I didn't really talk about that. But like I said, I could have given you guys 20 tips for getting to diamond, but I only chose 10. Okay. I'll move along. So Lulu, are you there? Hi, Natalie. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, probably the best thing is the knowing your goal and being able to help my builders. What can I do to help? Because at the moment I'm trying to balance out my two builders to get to premier and um, enrolling the odd person and actually struggling a little bit to know which one of the teams to put them on. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And that's where, um, like I said before, I often go like, you know, who, where's the alignment? Like, where's the synergy? Who can, is there, sometimes I'll say to my girls, okay, what's this girl's job? Like, does she have anything that like, oh, she's a midwife. Oh, well, this other person, or she's a teacher. Okay. Even though they don't know each other, there's really nice synergy there. So I'm really into like synergy, obviously. But sometimes you go, actually, if you're going for premier Louise, you're like, okay, so this girl is, she is a solid executive. And so, you know what, even though there's great synergy there, my goal is premier. And I'm actually going to put her here because we're only at 1700 here and she needs to be 2000. So like sometimes that's when I say synergy will kind of take the forefront. Um, and that's where it's like you and Melissa can chat, see what you think. And then she, ideally she or you will go, Hey Nat, these are my people. This is what we think. What are you thinking? And obviously I care because guess what? When you're premier, it gets her closer to gold. It gets, you know, together we rise to the top. It gets me closer to blue diamond. I really care. Like, right. Plus I really want to see you guys succeed. I mean, I don't want to see anyone sitting there being, you know, exec year after year or something like that. That's fine if that's their goal, but if they're trying to get, if they want to be a gold, I want them to be a gold too. You know, wherever they are in the tree, I want them to, to get to that goal. Definitely. Yeah, I would right. just like to get to the stage where we're paying for our oils and having a bit spare. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Anne, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Hi. All right, so what's one thing that you're going to take from tonight? I think the one thing that I've I would like to do is I guess just because I'm seven weeks and I'd kind of like to and I've been building my collection and my credit card looks um, quite crazy although I, I sort of always 
depositing funds into it. I'd kind of like to sort of see that on the plus side. Uh, so just sort of pay off some oils and um, and just kind of like self-manage this, this this venture of mine without it affecting, you know, the family. Yeah. So that's my first goal. And I think also being seven weeks in and just hearing all the awesome people in the group talking and you talking. Also just being consistent with my time so I don't burn out because I am a little bit of a workaholic. So I think just that really nice balance flow and knowing that early on and just setting time so I don't work through the night or do anything too crazy. So yeah, I've learned lots and um, I really appreciate everyone's honesty. It's been really awesome. Yeah, awesome. That's super cool. And this is the kind of thing that we can do as well when we're in person, if, if we're at a training, sometimes if it's a smaller group like this, not like 200 people, but like just 20 people, 15, we can really dive into some of these conversations even more. So that's good. So it really, that comes back to a little bit around boundaries about when you're working and when you're not working. And I don't mean, because some of us at the higher levels, like, you know, we need to figure out I'm not available. I'm not answering that call. Like we need to be like, I'm not available 24 seven. Whereas you're at the, at the other stage, you're at the early stages. You're so keen to learn. You're so keen to like, you get into it. And, and it's like, you have to actually cut yourself off and be like, you know what? I actually need to spend some time with someone else or like close the computer or whatever. So boundaries is going to be a big one for you. Yes. Yeah, totally. That's, you hit it on the head. Awesome. <laughs> That's cool. All right. So who have we got? I can't see where, how do I see everybody else? I can only see. Okay, have I got anybody else that I haven't asked? Who else is here? Is that everybody? I think so, maybe, I think so. Um, okay, awesome, ladies, great. So I'll just go through, if anyone else has any questions, go ahead and ask them. And meanwhile, I'm just gonna scroll through the comments and see if there's anything I should mention. My um, battery just died, so most of the Facebook Live got covered, but not all of it, it just died. Any, any other questions or comments, guys? Cool, oh, Lindsay was on, but she's gone, Melissa. I think it's really cool for you guys to also put faces to names because like I said, I really am happy for you guys to send people to each other's classes. There we go. So yeah, Anne's in Fungaparoa, Pauline's in Huntley. Oh, I didn't get a chance to hear from Pauline. Um, yeah, you're going to do that, Amy? You're going to do the two by two by two by one thing? Very cool. Okay, so I want to hear goals. Melissa Mills, Platinum. Okay, so that's your goal by, by at some point. Premiere by Christmas for Louise. Premiere by cr Christmas for Amy. Charlene, Diamond by the 31st of December or sooner. I love how you call him Paul Owens. That's so sweet. Is that your little nickname for him? Because he's Paul Owens. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge you to get to Diamond by the 31st of October. Okay. Um, Anne says to earn something is her goal. Yeah, honey, you just like got to stop spending so much money on your oils. Um, get them for free. Um, Awesome. Yeah, and same with you, Amy, right? Just started to pay for your monthly order last month. Yeah, with your AR balance. That's a milestone. That's awesome. And send your account some love and like send your account some love and then like bring in a bit more of that, definitely. Cool. And I love you guys. Now, I'm not going to read all of them, but basically, I love seeing you guys highlighting your strengths. You know, one of my strengths is empathy. You know, I'm a problem solver. Da da da. I love it. It's really important to acknowledge your strengths and not just because it's not just go like, oh, I need to do this. I should be more like that. I should, you know, no, just like acknowledge your strengths. They're like a star, right? A shining bright star. These are your five top strengths. Find other people that have other strengths and work with those people just like you would in a normal job. Um, Awesome. Okay. I'm not going to read through all that. Thank you guys for spending a whole hour with me. I hope you found that useful. I um, hope you like the fact that I put together a presentation for you. Um, and I'm just going to be trying to do one Zoom call a month, just a call like this. And I'm going to change the topic. So I'm totally open to topics that you guys want. I actually am going to do a, probably a video about like the nature solutions class and how to run that. Basically, it'll just be me role playing. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, I'm just going to show you what I do. Um, and but anyway, I'm totally open to your guys thoughts and also in person masterminds. As my team grows, I'm more than happy to organize like one in the North Shore for Joe and whoever, you know, whoever's up in the North Shore in that area. And then one over the botany Howick way, maybe with Kat and Melissa's team, you know, we can kind of do stuff like that. Now and then we will fly down to Invercargill for you guys in, in Christchurch, etc. in Wellington. Um, I'm looking at coming to Wellington next week, Tracy, I will message you spontaneously I know Tuesday night so um and Wednesday so awesome great to see you guys there's some more exciting stuff coming on the way so we'll be letting you guys know about that later on this week thank you thank you bye guys